Good afternoon, everyone. We're the George Mason Wastewater Student Design Team, and uh, we're here to present our uh, findings on the solutions, or solids handling solutions for the HL Mooney plant in Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm Michael Parker. I am Michael Bjorga. Hi, I'm Andrea Passage Van Zerbin. I'm Joe Yinsen. So, we'd like to start off by talking about what our uh, design approach was, and I think what really helped us reach a consensus was to meet with the plant uh, owners, operators, engineers, and really get a handle of what their desired solution, what the needs were, so that we could make sure our solution fit into their current operations. Um, so Prince William County Service Authority is currently seeking a, an evaluation of different options for how they're able to treat the solids on the site. Um, currently, the plant uses a fluidized bed incinerator to incinerate the solids um, and when this is offline, they used to rely on a multiple hearth incinerator, but that for the last several years, that's been decommissioned due to concerns over cyanide and uh, other air pollution concerns. Um, so they're looking for a series of sustainable options that will give them lots of different, uh, more options in how they're able to deal with the solids on the site. Um, so, like I said, they're looking for a backup to the FBI. Uh, typically, the FBI is taken offline for periods of maintenance and repair that are generally four to six weeks. And the design and construction cap is $25 million for this project, and it has to be operational by December 2023. So, the plant is currently located on about 58 acres, and the average daily uh, design rate is 24 MGD, and the plant generally produces about 37 uh, dry tons per day of solids, and it discharges into Neabsco Creek, which uh, is a tributary of the Potomac River and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. Here's a copy of the site plan from the Mooney plant. Uh, since the prompt focuses on the solids handling building, uh, that's labeled M buildings M16 and M17, which are highlighted in orange on the site plan. And so we evaluated our criteria based on what we felt would best meet the needs of the plant operators and engineers uh, to give them the greatest variability in their treatment process. Okay, so currently the plant uh, uses a system for treating their so so for handling the solid that involves gravity thickening, um, sludge storage, dewatering, and finally incineration. The primary and secondary sludge is held in, on the first floor of the solids handling building, then is pumped into centrifuge on the second floor, and then is sent into the primary incinerator to be reduced into ash. This ash is then disposed outside. The primary incinerator on the plant right now is a fluidized bed incinerator, or, or FBI. Uh, it has been used since 1996. It replaced the former incinerator, a multiple heart incinerator, or MHI, that was the commission in 2006. Ever since then, there has not been any reliable redundancy to the primary incinerator. That being said, um, rehabilitating the multiple heart incinerator was one of the first options we look early on on our, on our project. However, this has many disadvantages. Uh, the primary, primary ones being that it lacks capability for mercury removal. Um, it also produces cyanide as a byproduct of the incineration. Uh, in fact, while talking with the plant engineers and operators, we discovered that the last time the MHI, the multiple heart incinerator was used in 2006, uh, the cyanide produced from it uh, ended up killing all the bacteria, all the biota within the activated sludge treatment tanks, which is essential for the plant to stay in operation. Uh, another concern is that the emissions from the multiple heart incinerator do not meet, do not meet current air pollution um, standards, which makes it almost impossible to get a <coughs> permit for it to be operational. Uh, there is a ever increasing cost as well for rehabilitating the, this incinerator, which we estimated using this EPA historic curve for MHI systems. Um, all these disadvantages led the team to deem rehabilitation of the MHI as uh, not, not optimal. So currently the plan uh, uses as a, back, a backup for the disposal and handling of solids uh, a, 
contract with a private contractor called Cinegram. This only happens during maintenance periods and on unexpected shutdowns of the fluidized bed incinerator. This process involves the addition of lime to the dewater gate for further stabilization. Then this is whole at 26% solids to a local landfill. However, ever since 2012, uh, complaints from the local neighbors of the local landfill um, emanated from the unstabilized dewater uh, sludge had led this option to be not acceptable any longer. Uh, the plant would like to treat their sludge to at least class B biosolids, class A being preferred, of course. Class, a, B, and class B and A biosolids are the classification that EPA gives to um, dewater heater heated sewage sludge that has been treated and disinspected to meet regulations in order to be applied for plant, plant application, composting, and other uses. As mentioned before, the team did visit the site uh, in order to get some important operator input from the uh, engineers and operators of the plant, and we discovered some pretty critical information. Um, the main point being that a shrimp bioset pilot was performed in, inside in the plant uh, previously that successfully treated the uh, sludge into class A biosolids, will be the, which will be will have been ideal for lime application. However, the, however, problems with uh, the disposal of, of these biosolids have led this option not to be considered at the moment. And this is because the contractor couldn't find any local any local farms or landowners that would take the biosolids due to their nature only being produced on a emergency basis instead of a regular basis. Um, from talking to the operators and the engineers of the plant, we also discovered that they would not like any kind of process, backup process that involves any kind of biological digestion, simply because these processes take a good amount of time to get them started, and that is not optional, optional for an emergency process. So, um, Hauling the dewater cake to nearby facilities was also considered as an option. However, this is problematic because there are several facilities of the area that do not have a receiving area, which will have to be constructed by the municipal plan in order for this to be uh, an option. And also, the plan is severely limited on space uh, to provide access to all the trucks that will be rest necessary for this uh, hauling process. However, on a visual inspection of the plan, we discovered that there's plenty of space for expansion once the MHI um, is disabled and not removed. So we looked into three different alternative solutions. First one was using shrimp biosolid technology to treat the sludge into class A biosolids for landfill and land application. Second alternative was to dry the sludge, haul them and sell them to a manufacturer. Third alternative was to produce pellet fertilizers from biosolids. Shrimp bioset is an EPA approved alkalization and stabilization method that uses lime, high temperature, sulfamic acid, and high pH degree level to treat the water sludge into class A biosolid. It, has, it needs little effort to start up and a small footprint for installation. During our uh, site visit, plant operator indicated that the a smell of solid produced during the pilot study were so potent that they had no option other than to send it to a landfill for disposal. Purpose of drying the, the sludge is to minimize its mass so as to save on hauling and disposal costs. Dry sludge are easy to store and handle and this would make additional options uh, such as selling them to a manufacturer to produce a product such as fertilizer possible. Um, uh, pelletized fertilizers are produced using a mixture of drying and granulation technologies. Granulation has many benefits as granulized biosolids <coughs> are, uh, are easy to, uh, as granulized, uh, I'm sorry, are easy to handle and this would also give the Muni facility a good degree of flexibility on their solid handling since they have full control of the granule procedure. Uh, if pellets, if the solid 
pellets are not able to resolve as fertilizer, plant could store them for a period of time. So when the FBI is operational again, the unsold pellets be incinerated. Dried solids are easy to store and cheaper to haul off in the event they can't be sold. So first thing we looked at for our uh, make our final decision or recommendation was the capital cost required for each of these. Uh, as you can see, the new FBI is well over the capital budget allowed for this project, so that was immediately eliminated. Uh, next, we looked at re rehabilit re rehabilitating the multiple hearth incinerator, and due to the environmental concerns with the cyanide and air quality, that was removed, even though it was within the construction budget. Uh, Schwing Bioset, the additional dryers, and the uh, pelletized fertilizer production were all roughly in the same order of magnitude cost between four and six million dollars. And we also looked at a no build option, which was to continue hauling unclassified sludge to the uh, Hopewell landfill. Um, since all of the feasible solutions we came up with were well within the budget, we decided to go ahead and suggest that the plant go ahead and remove the multiple hearth incinerator and rehabilitate the uh, solids handling building so that even if they decide to go with no build for the time being, there's opportunity for that space to be used in the future. Um, so we performed a, a prioritization matrix analysis where we looked at different criteria that we uh, determined weighting based on our own engineering judgment and interviews with uh, the plant owner, operators, and engineers. And we analyzed the different uh, areas shown based on uh, the values assigned. Now, they might seem arbitrary, but 10 and 0.1, for example, those are, those are inverses of each other, and the inverses were used to assure uh, accurate weighting was applied to each of the different solutions. So here you can see how we weighted the different criteria against each other. Uh, for example, footprint was assigned a value of 10 or much more important, uh, much greater than uh, operations and maintenance cost, uh, just due to the site constraints of the plant. The footprint is a much more important criteria than the O&M costs. Uh, so we use the same approach to weight the different criteria, or weight, excuse me, weight the different options against each other for each of the criteria. Um, this example is operational flexibility, and like I said, the same approach was used. And here's the resultant matrix where all the columns were summed to determine the highest or optimal choice. And as you can see from this chart, on-site pelletized fertilizer production was the ultimate uh, recommendation we're going to go with. So our final recommendation is to install an on-site pelletized fertilizer system. This would go in place of the MHI on-site. Based on our site visit and the original site plan we received, uh, this, this kind of system would fit in place of the MHI, which is about a three-story building, three-story space, about two to 3,000 square feet per level. There are two ways uh, pelletized fertilizer systems work. One is through direct heat or indirect heat, but they both, both will produce granular uh, fertilizer. Through direct heat, you can circulate hot air. We suggest using hot air that comes off the FBI to improve the thermal efficiency of the plant and also uh, increase sustainability. Uh, there's also indirect heat, which can be used uh, with less air, but we definitely prefer the direct heat it's more proven and reliable. Um, these are locations of where uh, these systems are currently being used. Direct heat is more common than indirect heat. I uh, noticed a couple of them are just up, up the street in Maryland, um, very close to our plant in Prince William County. Overall, an on-site pelletized fertilizer system, it'll reduce, it'll have a small footprint, it'll fit within the current uh, solid waste building uh, where the MHI is after it's demolished. Um, it'll increase the suspend, it'll have a sustainable option to um, work in tandem with the current FBI. It can use that heat that comes off the FBI and also provide the uh, plant with operational flexibility to produce a product that could be either stored on site easily, hauled very quickly or very cheaply, be a slight weight with 70% reduction of, uh, to biosolids. And it also has a uh, uh, versatility because it can be sold abroad or just incinerated if it's gone, if it goes unsold. 
The total cost of one of these systems, we got a quote from a manufacturer, uh, Vico International. They, they gave us a quote of $6 million, $3 million for the construction, the equipment itself, and $3 million for installation. Um, compares, uh, in comparison to the Baltimore plant at Patapsco, we, we contacted Cinegro, uh, who's the operator of the fertilizer system, and that the, the fertilizer system at Baltimore was a $15 million project, which is a significantly higher flow rate than we are at Prince William, which is about uh, 37, 24 MGD, 37.2 dry times per day. Uh, we estimate about a year of design and a year of construction for this system, so it'll be uh, produced well before our, Denmark, our deadline of 2023. Um, and, uh, so we'd like to thank all the judges for their time today. Uh, we'd like to thank our advisors um, that we met with, some people in the industry, uh, our uh, Peter Loomis, Tim Shea, CC Nguyen, Jeff Chapin, our advisor Matt Doyle, our uh, teammate Alan who wasn't able to join us, um, jump the gun, thank the judge a little early, <laughs> the judges again, um, Student Activities Committee, uh, Richmond WRF for, excuse me, Henrico WRF for hosting us today, and uh, we'd also like to thank Marino O'Shaughnessy for the, answering our emails and the plant tour. And uh, Dana and Elena for helping put on the student design competition. With that, is there any questions?